And this one is what I hate about Canon. But am I going to switch? Welcome to or welcome back to the channel. My name is Finn Badgley. I'm a commercial photographer and all-around content creator. And I've been shooting Canon now for the better part of 10 years. So this is everything that I've found to be a pro and a con, why I've stayed with them, and if I'm going to. Let me take you back. Originally, I started shooting Canon when I first got into photography when I was about 15 or 16 years old. I'm 25 now, so that would lead me to have been using them for 10 years, not professionally for 10 years, professionally for about four or five or so. But originally I started on the Canon T5i, was the latest in the Rebel series at the time. The good old fashioned entry level DSLR that a lot of people or their parents had for taking pictures of just about anything. And I took a photography class in high school and really enjoyed the medium and then only pursued it more. And I used a T5i for about two years or so before going into college to study photography. The T5i, the interface of it was pretty much a just a, a slightly simpler version of Canon's regular menu system even that they have today. So you could go from that to a regular Canon mirrorless camera today and still understand most of the system and how it works. Granted, a pro full frame mirrorless camera will have a lot more buttons and functionality that you'd have to learn, but the general idea and menu systems are the same. That's definitely pro number one, is the interface is pretty much the same across the board and it works pretty well within itself. It's very easy to jump from one camera to the other, which is why when I picked this guy up, the Canon 6D Mark I, when I was entering college, that I could jump from the T5i to this with basically no problem. And this is something that I don't recommend, but in the summer between high school and college, I had like my first full paid photography gig. And on that day, it was actually, I picked this up that morning and I ended up using two cameras. The T5i was my backup and I used this as my main camera. <laughs> Actually, my dad at the time looked at me and was like, oh, so you're not gonna be using that because obviously you haven't figured out how it works. And I'm playing around with it. And I'm like, no, I have a good sense of how it works. I'm gonna use this as the main camera. And then I'll use the T5i as the backup. And it worked out pretty well. The form factor is definitely bigger and chunkier than the T5i is. And I, honestly, I like it. I have fairly large hands, albeit pretty skinny but they are pretty large. So gripping this, it feels really good. And that'll be pro number two. I've always liked the ergonomics of Canon cameras. They feel very easy to hold in the hand. The T5i, not so much. For my larger hands, I kind of started like curling them a little bit more. It reminded me of when I would be holding some of the Sonys when they started out where that grip, it just wasn't, it, for a larger hand, it doesn't quite work as well. So that's one thing that I've always liked about them. They just feel really good in your hands. And then I used this pretty much all throughout college and then what started my professional career. In college, I shot a whole range of different subjects. That's obviously what you do. You pretty much try to figure out what you want to shoot and then by the end of it just shoot that which was actually really good for that way just allowing you to play in that way I don't know if I would recommend people to go to school for any artistic pursuit film photography that's a whole other video <laughs> that aside during my time in college I started working under a real estate photographer who hired me on as an editor and then later to actually go out and additionally shoot some of the houses that as he gained demand for, he couldn't keep up with and needed to hire on additional people. So this is the camera that I used for all of that. I used my 17 to 40 as it gives a nice wide field of view to get the rooms and make them look nice and spacious. And this handled all of that. I've done real estate with it. I've done fashion. I've done live events. I've done weddings. I've done headshots. I've done product, I've done pretty much almost anything you can imagine with this camera. Now this is one of my favorite things about Canon as a brand, because this thing I've had for quite a few years now. The 6D was originally released in 2012, and I think I picked it up. This is before the 6D Mark II even came out. This was when the 7D Mark II was first coming out. And I picked this guy up so we're looking probably, oh God, six, 
seven years ago now that I got this guy. And you can see it's, you know, some of the rubbers coming off here. This thing has taken a beating. There's a time when there is some paint on it from different creative shoots. I could pick this up and go out and do a shoot with it tomorrow and it would still produce great images. The image quality out of it is quite honestly fantastic for a camera that's now 10 years old. But in doing more video, in doing more fast paced on location work, I needed something where the autofocus was better and the video was better because the autofocus in this, I would almost never use. Or if I did, I would use the back button focus, put the center point of the focus, focus and recompose. And I would get generally most shots in focus, but sometimes there would be a little bit out or I would manually focus it and I would get about the same result. And it was around this time where some of my workflow would be changing up a bit where I thought about switching to Sony because I saw the autofocus, that, that was when they were having some issues with the autofocus before they really amped it up, but the video was there. Also, one of the cons that I did not like with Canon is that when you start getting into really low light, they don't perform as well. And then I started seeing things like, you know, for video, if we're talking that, the A7S II at the time was a beast in low light. And I started looking at that and I'm like, huh, okay, do I, do I switch? Because at this time I'm already invested in the Canon ecosystem, but I, I, I desired a little bit more. And that's when Canon came out with the R series of mirrorless cameras. And then that led me to be like, okay, I'm already invested in the Canon system. Let me give this a shot. Because I was like this, this close to switching to Sony. If I was at that point now, maybe I'd even switch to Fuji, quite honestly, because there's just certain demands that it couldn't keep up with. You start to see autofocus improvements, you start to see better low light performance and just better features in general. And Canon started lagging behind, but then they dropped the EOS R, the RP, the R5, the R6. And before the R5 even came out, I picked up what I'm filming this video on, the Canon EOS R. If you wanna see my thoughts after using it for three years now, if I would still buy this now, there's a video right here to check that out and get my whole thoughts on this camera. In releasing this, it fulfilled just about every need I had. The autofocus was laser fast and still is, and the video, really created a great image for what I was looking for. It gave me log capabilities, 10-bit 422 on an external monitor, and it gave me what I was looking for. Now, this camera isn't perfect. Like the touch bar that they then removed for later versions, nobody really uses that. I used it a bit at first, but I don't really use it anymore. So that's just kind of unnecessary space there. I don't really hate it, I just don't overly use it too much. But something to note is this camera, the EOS R with an adapter, with an EF lens, the autofocus is faster and I get more images in focus than the EF lenses natively on the 6D because this camera, the autofocus was just that slow. And now you see even better autofocus out of Canon, out of Sony, out of Fuji. And it's really great to see because sometimes this camera will miss, but it hits a lot of the time. And I can't really complain in that way. The low light is a lot better, although I will still keep this as a con because it's not quite as good as some other cameras. Canon seems to have less overall dynamic range than what I've seen in camera tests from Sony. Now, what I'm interested in is the overall image and look and feel and how the camera user experience is. And I've been with Canon for my whole career and beyond that, my whole learning into photography. So that's one thing that's like a weird kind of bias that I do have. But that said, if these cameras weren't pushing to the levels that I needed them to be, I would switch or consider switching like I almost did. Because if you look at camera tests that are in depth, you can get a lot more dynamic range out of something like the Sony's, which is something that I would sometimes like, but it's not an overall deal breaker because another pro that I really like about Canon is the overall image. People talk all the time about color science and this and that and the other thing. The thing is the Canon files are really easy to work with. I know how to color grade them. I know how to edit them. 
but the overall image itself is just really pleasing and I like how it comes out both in the video and photo form. So that's kind of why I went towards this. It has a really high bit depth, which leads to a nicer overall image in my opinion. So if we're looking at a list of pros for Canon cameras after using them for 10 years, let's look at it this way. They're quite frankly built like a tank because I've hit this off of everything and it still works. I've had some bad things happen and it still ha works like a tank. And not only that, they have a large variety of lenses. They're upping the amount of RF lenses they have as well. And if not, you can't adapt. But even beyond that, I've used them for a long time and there's, there's a certain ease of use of the menu systems, of the workflow. They're easy to work with, they're easy to color grade. They're easy to manipulate and overall I like the Canon workflow. It doesn't really give me any barriers and if, I if I'm trying to find something that I'm not used to, I can pretty easily find it quickly through going through the menus. And lastly beyond that is the overall image which really drew me to these cameras and have kept me with them. But now let's go through the cons because they do have less dynamic range. I've seen they are not quite as good in low light. You will get a little more noise. And this is it, the last con that is the thing that I don't like about Canon. Because when they came out, shortly before the 6D came out, was the 5D Mark II. And this was the most innovative camera at the time. It was the first DSLR offering video. It changed the game. 5D Mark IIs were used on sets for crash cams, where now you're using like a Sony FX3 or different small Sony cameras because of the image. Canon, while still being one of the top camera brands, has lost that ability to innovate because you'll see cameras coming out with newer and better features all the time because cameras are being released all the time. And then what Canon will do is try to overcompensate. They'll try to go a step beyond where everybody else is and it'll end up hurting them. You can look at this with the R5 and how they add in a bunch of really intense video features, but it overheats where they try to, okay, let's do better than the Sony's. Let's go past it. And then that leads to an overheating issue where the camera can't hold up to it. And then you look at where they include IBIS, but that IBIS is, they make it so powerful where that ends up being a lot of wobble, especially if you're in a wide angle. And it's these things that they, they start falling a bit behind and they try to run so far ahead that they end up shooting themselves in the foot. And that has never sat right with me with a lot of the cameras that they've been releasing. And it's not something that's a deal breaker for me per se, but it's something that if you're considering different camera brands, it's something to look into and really consider because there are camera manufacturers who are quite frankly innovating more. Now don't get me wrong, the workflow, the system, it's great, I love it. That ability to innovate, we haven't seen it from Canon in a long time and I don't know if they'll eventually catch up to being able to step ahead of where the pack is right now, if they can jump ahead of the pack like they had for a long time, or if they're gonna fall behind as well. But for the foreseeable future, all this in mind, weighing the pros and cons, I'm definitely going to be sticking with Canon because of all the pros that I mentioned and the cons right now are not enough to outweigh that. So this is my thoughts of being a Canon photographer for 10, years now. Take the pros, take the cons, form your own opinions. What is your experience like with Canon cameras? Do you agree with anything I've said? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. We can have a good old-fashioned brand war. <laughs> I'm kidding. Be nice on each other, please. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell to be notified for all future videos. Work hard, rest often, and as always, I will see you on the next one.